So how do you find out if your shot is up to an NHL level standard? This video is going to detail out exactly how you find that out for yourself. This is how I have broken it down after studying thousands and thousands of hours of NHL footage in addition to new technology like puck tracking technology that you often see in every single NHL game nowadays. The first thing to note is what is the hierarchical standard, which means what is the standard above all else that we need to work up towards. And that is, after studying NHLer footage, we have found that most NHLers can shoot a wrist shot or a slap shot between 70 and 90 miles an hour. At least that's what we call a freak status. And then any of the lower levels would be like 50 to 70 miles an hour or 60 to 80 miles an hour, which are basic and elite, respectively. You don't have to look very far to recognize this pattern because every single NHL game nowadays has a puck tracking technology and you will see players taking wrist shots that register over 80 miles an hour but very rarely do they go over 90 miles an hour and even with their slap shots it's basically the same thing not many players hit 100 miles an hour and they don't really need to so that's the number to pay attention to on every single shot that you take the next thing to note is what type of shots do you, do you often take which is below the hierarchy it's the foundation that leads up to the top Basically what I'm getting at is that every single shot that you take opens up more options for you. And if all of your shots are at the 70 to 90 miles an hour standard that the NHLers are doing, well, in that case, you're going to be unstoppable as far as the shooting. So here are 10 of the most common shot types that you see NHLers taking. You have the little chip, which is really just a saucer pass in front of the net. And that actually happens a lot more often than people realize. You have the corkscrew to shot, which is getting into a wide stance and then releasing afterwards. And that matters because you get into a wide stance after transitioning from any mechanic that you take in order to release your shot. So out of the nine fundamental downhill skating mechanics, you're going to be transitioning to a corkscrew immediately afterwards. So that's why the corkscrew to shot is very important. But there's also shooting out of an anchor, which looks like this. So you're, you're using this little digging the heel into the ice to aid your rotation on your shot. And that actually happens a lot in tight, especially right here. Say if we're going around the net, you need to get it up top really quick. That's an easy way to chip it over. After that, we have shooting off of all four of your edges. So that is what, so that looks like this. You have you have knob side, inside edge, which looks like this. You have knob side, outside edge, which looks like this. You have blade side, inside edge, which looks like this. And you have, guess what? Blade side, outside edge, which looks like this. So what that means is that after you take your shot, what edge do your ankles relax to? So it could be off of this foot, it could be off of this foot, it could be off of that, and it could be off of that. Four different options. And then there's two styles of shots that can be used around an obstacle, such as the Matthews slash Bedard release, or the soft drag to shot, which I'll show this clip from Cole Caulfield using it. Both help out deking to your forehand or your backhand respectively and then there's one more shot type that i'm still playing around with and it's this little quick release type of shot which basically means that you go from backhand to forehand at the same time that you shoot and it looks like this i don't know exactly what to call that yet but that is the 10th style of shot that is in these shooting standards so i'll once again list out all the styles of shots you want to unlock all of those shots and you want all of those shots to be at the 70 to 90 mile an hour free hockey player athlete status. And that is the best way that I've found that you can tell if you have an NHL level shot or not. Now, the other thing to note is let's say you don't have a radar gun and you want to test out how hard your shot is. You could do this. You could just take your shot like this and then align that up with how an NHL shoots from the same position, mind you. So 
you're not going to be shooting. So say if we have an NHL clip who's shooting from down here, right, right above the hash marks, and then your shot looks like this, it will enter the net or your target at the same time that he does. But mind you, you're in a different position than that player is. So instead, maybe from out here, if you did that same shot, it might look like that. So, so that's how you can tell if your shot is hard or not from a distance like this. I'm going to pull up a Patrick Lining clip because that's a comparable that we have right here. He's shooting from right about the top of the circles and we'll be able to match it up real quick. So if in post-production it matches up really closely to a line A shot, I have about as hard of a shot as he does without needing a radar gun to tell it that I've got it. For line A, line A score! For line A, line A score! And you can do that same exact process for any other shot that you take. So maybe it's something like this. Maybe there's a video of that shot where the player is shooting from, from just about the top of the circles. You don't need a radar gun to tell how hard you shoot. You just need to compare your video with the video of NHLers. And that is also how you tell if your shooting is up to the standards of an NHL level. So you just got a wealth of value out of a free content. I've spent hours and hours over years and years studying how the best NHLers shoot. And this is how you measure up exactly how good your shot is compared to an NHL level. Again, you need a hard enough shot, 70 to 90 miles an hour in all situations. So we covered 10 different styles of shots. And then the corkscrew to shot, by the way, is the most versatile. So that means you have nine different variations out of that that you can shoot your shot out of. So th this leaves no room for, you know, standing still like this. Like I can come up here. Like I can go full speed if I want to. Like come out like that and then I can still tell that it's a harder shot. I don't need all these fancy like equipment or anything that, that plays with my reaction to m measure and align up my shot with the shot of an NHLer because you can just replicate that in isolation like this. And I've proven that you can replicate it in isolation. The point of this is to simplify your training so that you can make breakthroughs a lot faster than what a lot of methodologies out there are teaching. Because we need something that is focused, that is measurable, and that we can continue to progress. And I believe these standards are the way to do that. I believe all these shot variations are the way to do that for shooting in hockey. So again, you're getting a wealth of value. This is what I usually promote to my one-on-one -on -one clients, but I'm putting this out there for free. Send me your video on all these shot variations. And if you haven't sent me a video already, I'm going to give you one free video analysis on your shot, whether it's in game or in practice, just like out here. So I want to thank you for watching. Go check out the Hockey Act system and all my other programs. If you want to get personalized coaching with me, if you join the Hockey Axe community, you're going to have access to me directly. You're also going to have access to community forum with all the other Hockey Axe members. I will customize your plan for you. And if you want even more in depth, customized coaching, go apply for the Hockey Axe full year system where you're going to have my full attention for an entire year. It's a three to five year development plan that's really for anyone who really wants to invest into their hockey development. So thanks for watching. Go achieve the standards and I'll see you next time.